de Apocalipsis, capítulo 7, um, versículos 9 al 10. And you can go ahead and follow along in your Bibles, and you can hear God's word read aloud in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 10. Um, let's go ahead and open our hearts and open our ears to all that the Lord would want to um, share with us um, this morning. Revelation 7, uh, verses 9 to 10. I'll read for us first in Spanish and then in English. Apocalipsis capítulo um, 7, versículos 9 y 10. Después de esto miré y apareció una multitud tomada de todas las naciones, tribus, pueblos y lenguas. Era tan grande que nadie podía contarla. Estaban de pie delante del trono y del cordero, vestidos de ropas blancas y con ramas de palma en la mano. Proclamaban a, 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 a gran voz, la salvación viene de nuestro Dios que está sentado en el trono y el cordero. Amen. Revelation chapter 7, beginning at verse 9 to verse 12. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes, and they were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Verse 11, all of the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and they worshiped God saying, amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Vamos a orar juntos. God, we thank you, Lord, and we just acknowledge your glory, your presence here with us, God. We acknowledge, Lord God, um, just who you are. We acknowledge all that you have done and all that you're doing. We know, Lord, that right now, maybe some of us just feel tired. Some of us feel uh, exhausted, sad, uh, renewed, rejoiced. However it is that we feel, Lord, we just want to bring all of that to you today, Jesus all of ourselves, and would you do something new in and through us, God? We love you, God. Speak to us by your word. Háblanos hoy, Dios Santo, por medio de tu palabra. Thank you, Lord. We continue to pray, Lord, for those that are grieving, for those that are sick, for those that are in the process of healing, Lord. God, we also lift up, of course, our, our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, Lord, over in Hawaii and Maui, Lord God, as it has just been utter destruction, Lord God. And uh, Lord, we just pray your hand, your healing, um, recovery and rebuilding, Lord. Our hearts, our prayers are with um, those that have been impacted, Lord, and we lift them up, God, now in this time. Lord, speak to us, God, through your word in a new way, God, because you are doing something new. Eres el Dios que hace algo nuevo. And we pray all of this, Lord, in the beautiful and faithful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So together over the past couple of weeks, we've been learning a bit about the book of Revelation and what it is and what it isn't. Also, hemos estado estudiando el libro de Apocalipsis. And one thing I've found to be true in this life and as we grow in the Lord is that sometimes for God to teach us something new, we need to unlearn former things in order to learn a new thing. I want everyone to hear that. Sometimes for God to teach us something new, we need to unlearn a former thing in order to learn a new thing. And we have a slide on that, Sergio, if you could put it for us um, as well. Some, sometimes for God to teach us something new, we need to unlearn uh, a, an old thing. A veces para que Dios nos enseñe algo nuevo, necesitamos desaprender algo. And learning and unlearning is actually a part of wisdom, it's a part of maturity. It's a part of growth. In fact, children, right? Children have to unlearn crawling as their main way to move in order to learn walking, right? Children need to unlearn whining and crying in order to learn to communicate with their own words. Amen? Actually, the more we think about it, 
Many grown-ups need to unlearn whining and crying and tantrums in order to learn to communicate with their words. Amen? <laughs> Learning and unlearning is also a part of wisdom and of safety. For example, who here knows how to drive? Who knows how to drive a car here? Raise your hand. Who knows how to drive? Who's confident in their driving? When you drive, on what side of the road do you drive in? What side? On your right side, right? Yes, that's true here in the U.S., but what if you travel to another country? What if you travel somewhere like England or the United Kingdom? What side of the road do you drive in in that part of the world? On the left side. So if you're in England and you drive on the right side of the road, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt someone else. Or you're going to get in trouble with the authorities. You know, I have a story about that, actually. Uh, once my wife, Charlotte, and I were traveling in her home country um, over in Uganda where they also drive on the left side of the road. So she had to adjust to driving on the right side of the road when she came over here. And I, I didn't realize it, um, that she had to make that adjustment, because why? I just assumed that everywhere in the world drove on the right side of, of the road traffic just because that's what I knew. But guess what? I was wrong. I learned something, but I had to unlearn in order to learn something new. I was wrong and learned the hard way and the scary way, actually. At one point, we were in a part of the world where we were going to cross the street. And here in America, in the United States, when we cross the street, what direction do we look in first? Right or left? We look right. I don't even know if you notice it, but everyone, uh, without, subconsciously, when you step out into the road, you look right, then left. But in other parts of the world, where they drive on the left-hand side, their instinct is actually to first look left, and then to look right. And at one point, in other parts of the world, where they conducen por la, la mano izquierda, su instinto es primero mirar a la izquierda antes de la derecha. Now, when I've done that in parts of the world where they drive on the left, guess what happens? Sometimes, when I go just by what I know and the instinct of looking right first, sometimes I almost get run over. I almost get hit or I almost cause an accident. Once Charlotte and I were together on this international trip, and we were crossing the street, and I was looking to my right side instead of my left. And a car just sped right in front of me, and I even felt the wind of it hit me. It was a really scary moment, just a few inches in front of me, and I almost fell to the ground. And guess what? I almost got hurt in that moment, and I even almost hurt someone else because I was unwilling to unlearn a former thing in order to learn a new thing. Again, friends, brothers, sisters, sometimes for God to teach us something new, we need to unlearn an old thing in order for God to teach us a new thing. A veces Dios nos necesita a, a ayudarnos desaprender para aprender algo nuevo. And we've been learning a lot together this month on the book of Revelation. And amazingly, almost everyone has an opinion on Revelation. Whether they've read it or not, they've heard something about it, right? And some of those things are good. We need to receive them. Others we may need to unlearn and just give to God as well. We've been learning uh, about this special book. And as we've talked about, in order to grow in wisdom on Revelation, we need to unlearn the idea that we're experts on this book. We're not experts on this book. You and I, as followers of Jesus, we are called to be students, disciples, and lifelong learners. Para crecer en sabiduría, necesitamos ser estudiantes, discípulos, y aprendices por vida de la palabra de Dios. As we talked about last week, we need to unlearn the popular but actually untrue idea that this book is called the book of Revelations, right? Plural. It's not the book of Revelations. The original title of the book is The Revelation of Jesus Christ. 
and in fact, we refer to it as revelation, singular, and learn that the fact of the matter is that it's actually always been called revelation since the beginning. And, and, and so again, to be clear, it's revelation, not revelations. And it's very important because all of revelation points to revealing one thing. And it points to revealing that Jesus is where the life is at, right? To, to a, a revelation is to reveal something. It's as if there's a covering that needs to be pulled back and revealed. And the thing that God reveals in revelation is that Jesus is the why behind the what. He even calls himself the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is saying, I am the one. I am the thing behind the thing. I am the one who created you and the one you have been seeking this entire Time. I am him. I am the one that you are thirsty for. I am the one that you are hungry for, says Jesus. And that's the big reveal in Revelation. All of Revelation is important. And we can write this down. I believe we have a, a slide for it. Uh, all of Revelation is important and interesting. But the entire book of Revelation has a primary purpose. The purpose of revelation is pointing to God's great revelation, to Jesus Christ, to God himself coming to us. Jesus is actually the great connector, the one who connects heaven and earth, life and eternity all together. He's God's big reveal. En el libro de Apocalipsis vemos que Jesucristo es lo que Dios quiere demostrar y revelar. Dios mismo que viene con nosotros. Jesucristo es el gran conector del cielo y la tierra y la vida y toda la eternidad. Revelation is actually when God pulls back the curtain. When God shows us what's really going on. What's really going on in us. What's really going on around us. And what's really going on through us. Nos demuestra en el libro de Apocalipsis que realmente está pasando en nosotros y alrededor de nosotros. So in order to know what something is, we need to know what something isn't, right? So let's be clear about this. Revelation is not meant to be just a, a book that is a secret code that needs to be unlocked about the end of days. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that's disappointing or if that's frustrating to hear. Because I know maybe in, if you're anything like me, I grew up. I, had, I learned a lot of that. My brother who was here last week, we were actually even um, talking about that last week and kind of smiled about it, right? And it may be frustrating, but part of my role as your pastor and preacher is to proclaim the scriptures faithfully in the way that they are. And Yes, there's a lot of room for conversation and interpretation and all of that. I'm not just throwing shade on all of that. We, that. We're never called to do that as the body of Christ. But I want you to know this. Revelation is God's good news. Revelation is God's good news filled with eternal hope, but it's delivered to us to, in a bit of a complex and fascinating package and format that has a lot of room for conversation, for engagement, and interpretation also. And that's okay. That means we're all part of the conversation. El libro de Apocalipsis nos da las buenas noticias de Dios. Nos llena con esperanza. No es una noticia de horror o temor. So again, to be clear, Revelation is not a book that is meant to be used as a weapon. It's not a book that is meant to fill others with fear or to be afraid to open up or any of that based on, you know, different thoughts, ideas, theories, all of that. In fact, we find comfort in our Lord Jesus, right? Because he himself tells us that all time belongs to God. If we read in Matthew 24, 36, if we could put it up and you can write this down. Remember, people brought these same questions to Jesus about the last days and the, the, the final days and so on. But what we see here, our Lord Jesus himself says, but about the day or the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven nor the sun, but only 
the Father. Pero en cuanto el día y la hora, nadie lo sabe, ni siquiera los ángeles del cielo, ni el Hijo, sino solo el Padre. Sabe la última hora, el último día. So, to be honest with you, if anyone ever tries to tell you that they know something that Jesus actually tells us that they don't know, I'm sorry to break it to you. But that's just, that's not fully the truth. It may be sincere, but it's not fully the truth according to the scriptures here. Because at the end of the day, whose word am I going to trust Your word, a person's word, an opinion, or am I going to receive Jesus at his word? As he tells us about the day or the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The book of Revelation actually even warns us about adding or taking away from this book, or those who would claim that they know something, that when they really don't, um, It actually tells us in Revelation 22, verse 18. It says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds to them, God will add to that person the plagues, the plagues described in the scroll, verse 19. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll, uh, uh, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in the scroll. But then remember this, the next step in that is a word of blessing, of hope from our Lord Jesus. It says this, followed with good news to those who place their hope and trust in Jesus. Verse 20, he who testifies to these things, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And the final verse of the Bible tells us the grace of the Lord Jesus Be with God's people. Amen. Those are the final words in the entire scripture. And remember, that's a word of good news, not of fear. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with God's people now and forever. Amen. As the Lord tells us about the day or the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And friends, brothers, sisters, I want you to know that that's a life lesson for us. And I want you to hear this. It's okay not to know everything. It's okay not to know everything. We're not called to know everything about anything. Because the call of Jesus is the call to faith the call to trust, and the call to believe. The call of Jesus is not a call to seek comfort through temporary certainty, but it's a call to faith, to trust, and to believe. El llamado de Jesucristo es un llamado a la fe, a la confianza, y en creer en su palabra. No para tener to todas la la las respuestas. Christian views um, on, on uh, the end of days, they differ, and next week we'll talk a little bit about the, that as well. But um, here's what we believe as God's people here at Imago Church. We believe that the call of Jesus is the call to live by faith. To live by faith, to, live, to walk in trust, and to believe in eternal hope. We believe that our only true comfort in life and death is in Jesus Christ, both in this life and in eternity. That's what we believe. We believe that God's plans and purposes, including the last things and the end of days and the second coming, which we believe in, we believe that God's plans and purposes to bring unity and restoration to all things in heaven and on earth. We believe that with all of our hearts. He said it, we believe it. We also believe that we are not in control. We are not in control of when that happens or when it will or won't. Because here's what I want you to hear. 
friends, brothers, sisters, family. All of God's plans and all of God's purposes, including the last things and the final days, all of God's plans and purposes will never be on our time. All of God's plans and purposes will never be on our time, but God's plans and purposes will always be on time. So, the big question, right? When will it happen, Pastor Carlos? When will it happen? What article, what verse should I read? When will the end of days happen? And I do have an answer for you today. And you can write it down. When will the end of days happen? It will happen on time. It will happen on time, which is God's time. And that's perfect timing. That's perfect timing that we're called to trust in, to believe in, to hope in. We're called to believe, hope, and trust in our faithful God now and into eternity. So if we want to practice heaven, if we want to practice space with God and eternal life, we can start that practice now. We can believe, we can hope, we can trust. And we can see God do beautiful and new things. God's plans and purposes will never be on our time, and I believe we have a slide on this, so you can write it down. But God's plans and purposes will always be on time. Whatever God's doing in your life, it may not be in your plan or your timing. But I guarantee you, God will be on time. God will deliver for you. God will provide what you need, what you're seeking. As God's people, as Christians, we can confidently live by the conviction that God's reign will come to be and that in God's future, all things are made new. All things will be restored. And I know I can hear it, right? It's like, yes, I get it, Pastor Carlos, but what about this and that and that thought and that interpretation and that thing in the news, those signs of the times? And the answer to that, the answer of our Lord Jesus about the day or the hour, no one knows. But you know what my uh, suggestion is for you? Focus on the main thing. And that will get you to your final destination. Our faith calls us to stay in our lane and to trust God as he is in control. To stay in our lane and learn to enjoy the right of this life. I know that may be difficult because this life is, is challenging at times. It's hard. It's heavy. But part of the call, and maybe that's why we can obsess with second things as well and think, well, when is it all just going to end? Well, it's going to be on time in God's time. But our faith calls us to stay in our lane. And the one who's going to decide when that happens, that's God's lane. That's not our lane. We can stay in our lane and we can learn to enjoy the right of this life. Not to try to control it or hurry it up or make it happen. You know, I think about my, my middle son. All of my kids are, have a little bit of a stomach flu, so they're a little low energy. They're usually high energy. But my middle son, Lael, or uh, Lael, Lalito, um, when we go on road trips, he's in that age, right? Five, six years old. And we got to go to the coast and do some fun things over this, uh, this summer. And he's learned the phrase, Dad, are we there? Are we there yet? Every five minutes. Dad, are we there? It's like five minutes ago, I literally told you, no, two more hours, but he, for him, two hours, five minutes, what's the difference, right? Are we there yet? And, you know, I've even had to be a bit more spiritual in my answer to him sometimes, right? When he says, so, Dad, are we there yet? And I can respond, son, about the day or the hour, no one knows. <laughs> Just trust. Just look ahead. Just focus. Stay in your lane and learn to enjoy the ride. Because God has you on a journey. God's not done with what he's working on in your life. Stay in your lane and learn to enjoy the ride because the Lord is taking us and guiding us to our destination. He's got you. 
He's got us. Dios nos sostiene. And he'll be with us in the long journey, in the bumps, and he will take us to our final destination. We can trust him. We can even believe the living testimony of our beloved brother, Ruben Madrid. He trusted and he's reached the final destination. He ran his race. He trusted in his Lord. And he's now fully rejoicing. Just as our brother Reuben did, we can trust in the Lord. Dios estará con nosotros el camino, eh, todo el camino. So may we stay in our lane and may we learn to enjoy the ride. To enjoy the ride of this life, remembering that our faithful Father will take care of us and that Jesus will not betray us. Sometimes we're in a hurry for something to end or we can get in those thoughts because we think we're not going to be taken care of or we'll be betrayed or hurt. Your faithful father will take care of you and he will never betray you. Revelation actually humbles us. It doesn't puff us up. It humbles us and reminds us that God is God and we are not. Stay in your lane. Enjoy the ride. He's at the wheel in this journey of life and into eternity. Sometimes as his children, we get worried and we get stressed. I get it. I've been in that boat too. And we keep asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? With all the different theories and conspiracies or whatever it may be, right? But no, trust in God. Believe him. He will be faithful. He will get you to your final destination. Dios es Dios. Nosotros no lo somos. God is perfect. We are imperfect. Dios es perfecto. Nosotros somos imperfectos. Remember, revelation is actually about God revealing something. Revelation is about God making a big reveal. And the reveal in revelation is that Jesus Christ loves you. That Jesus Christ has put back together something precious that has been broken. La, lo que se, la revelación es que Cristo ha restaurado todo. He's put back together something precious that has been broken. By his grace we are made new. And friend, brother, sister, If you ever feel broken, if you ever feel like life is chaotic, the promise of Jesus is that he will restore you in his presence, which begins now and into eternity. He'll restore your heart. He'll restore your mind, your body, your soul. Dios nos va a renovar y asemblar y restaurar. In the same way that he's going to restore all things and make all things new in his presence for those who place their faith and trust in him beginning now and into eternity, those who rest and abide in him. Not only will Jesus restore you and me, but Jesus will restore and make all things new. That's part of God's big reveal in Revelation. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you, Lord, that you always, always make a way and you will get us to our final destination. Lord, we've fed on your precious word and we ask God that you, Lord, would be the one to just guide us, Lord, in this life. Instead of trying to control, instead of trying to make things happen, may we learn to trust you and to enjoy the ride, God. May we live by faith, not by sight. May we believe you more than we believe other voices around us or even that voice inside our head. May we believe you, the one who says, I am making all things new. I am making all hearts new. I am restoring. I am healing. 
I am building up. I am doing a new thing. And Lord, right now we want to give you any brokenness that we need to give you. Te queremos dar, Señor, nuestros corazones aquebrantados para que los restaures. And Lord God, we give you our hearts and we pray that you would bring them together, our broken hearts, and make them beautiful and restored and renewed in the way that only you can, Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for your big reveal, which is you making all things new. Thank you, Father. Help us to believe and to live by that eternal truth, now and always, in the faithful and precious name of Jesus, we pray.